Hello, um, my name is Mark Foster. I'm a college professor at a college in the suburban Kansas City area. And about three years ago, I discovered that I am autistic. This video is an introduction to that and an explanation of my background. I realize I probably seem a little bit stiff. I'm kind of nervous doing this even though I lecture to students every day. Um, I'm not used to uh, making recordings where I can't actually reach out and uh, touch the people that I'm talking to, so uh, I, I apologize if I do come across that way to you. When I was a child, I was diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia. Not unusual at all. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people my age, and I'm 54 years old, been told I don't look it, um, were diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia, but in reality they were autistic. And um, when I went back and I read the description of childhood schizophrenia after being re-diagnosed uh, three years ago, I was amazed to find out that part of the description was a person with autistic-like behaviors. So, in effect, I was diagnosed as autistic as, as a child. There was no um, separate diagnosis for autism in the uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association at that time. Uh, so, um, anybody who was an autistic, um, who went and saw a psychiatrist, uh, good chance that they would be diagnosed uh, with schizophrenia or some other other related condition, some other type of psychosis. But I was not psychotic. Um, I didn't hear voices, uh, didn't see things, had no trouble distinguishing reality from illusion. In fact, uh, I was very much aware of reality and aware of my own reality and uh, the kinds of difficulties that I experienced and uh, the, con the constant bullying that I was being subjected to. So um, reality was, was, was constantly staring at me in the face and, and I, I was not delusional about it at all. Um, but I did receive the usual treatments that a person with schizophrenia at that time in the early 60s might have received. For example, um, I was on tranquilizers um, my entire childhood. I received electric shock treatments when I was 11 years old. Um, I was sent to a, uh, a special school briefly until I objected so strongly they took me out of it. When I, when I found out that I couldn't actually get a high school diploma, I would have to get an equivalency degree or, or a, a GED. Um, and uh, gradually, as I got older, I, I, I became more adapted. And um, I went to college, did well, went to graduate school, did well, got a PhD in sociology, became a college professor, and effectively just put my childhood behind me. Periodically, I would go to see a psychiatrist, not a psychiatrist, a psychologist or a counselor, um, because of my difficulty in establishing relationships with women. And that really bothered me that I could not seem to um, interact effectively with with women enough to have a relationship of any sort. I never, I've never really had a girlfriend uh, up till my age. Uh, never had a girlfriend. Never been married. Obviously, uh, have no kids. And um, so it was a very, you know, it was, it was very traumatic for me. Then, what happened a few years ago is. Um, I had a roach infestation in my apartment, and I don't mean to be gross, but the roaches were crawling on my bed while I was sleeping, and one time they actually, I broke, woke up and one of them was actually inside of my hair, um, which, it was, and, and so consequently I just could not sleep. Uh, I developed a tremendous insomnia. Um, went to see my uh, my regular physician. He didn't know what to do. He gave me a tranquilizer, which didn't work, mild tranquilizer. 
gave me a mild uh, sleeping pill, which also didn't work. And then he said, you need to see a psychiatrist. After the way I was treated by the psychiatric establishment as a child, I made a pledge that I would never again darken the office of a psychiatrist. But um, circumstances being what they were, I did. I, I looked around and lo as luck would have it, I found a psychiatrist who actually had a specialization or one of his specializations was in autism. So when I went to see him, first thing he said is, he said, well, you know, you, you have OCD. And that explained a lot of my problems as a child, but it didn't explain everything. And a few visits later, he said, you know, tell me about your, uh, your history, about your childhood. So I did. And he said, oh, well, that's, that's autism. It was a wake-up call, and it was, it was an awakening. And since that time, I have become an autistic activist. I have, I have my own um, autistic project, which is called the uh, Collective to Fight Neuroletism at neuroletism.com. That's uh, N-E-U-R-E-L-I-T-I-S-M. Dot com, short for Neurological Elitism. And um, I'm involved in, in planning the, uh, the autistic conferences was at, that we have at the college where I work. In fact, uh, having these conferences was originally my idea. And uh, so I become very much involved in this whole, in this whole area. I'm on the, the board of directors of the local chapter of the Autism Society. So my life has been transformed, and and so those uh, those cockroaches that I, I at one time was very angry at and wished would would go away, uh, now I am eternally grateful to them. Thanks for listening and watching.